Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. Week four of the Sloop Hex is here. Ready to dive right into it. In, How are you in college football, but yeah, more importantly, the Sloop Hex. Yes. Week four of college football, because we don't count week zero. Well, no, you don't count zero. You can't sound. I mean, if you wanted to count zero, you can't count zero. It's literally uncountable. It is. Yeah. All right. Slew picks. <laughs> we we are picking. We are going to be picking the Vegas lines as of when CBS closes them. In our pick them. I think it was Monday, Monday night, sometime around there. They Sometime Monday. Set them up. Yep. They they set them. Uh, we picked seven games. You can listen to our Ohio State pick in our previous episode where we picked them at 39 and a half. I think that's moved up if you looked today or when we're recording this, it's at 40 and a half, but we picked it at 39 and a half. So if these hear some numbers that's not quite the right numbers, well, take it up on CBS. So let's let's jump right into it. Um Friday night. Friday night. I hate Friday night games. They belong to high school here, but here we are. Friday night, Illinois taking on the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Both undefeated teams, 3-0 coming in. The Illini. Look at you. Look at you, Illini. Look at you, Nebraska. Nebraska (laughs) had some preseason hype. They did. They did. Illinois did not. Both teams are ranked here. We got a rank on rank matchup. So this cannot be one of our, uh, our chaos theory picks, Jared. No, it cannot. Yep. So Nebraska is a at home an eight and a half point favorite. Uh, Again, Friday night, eight o'clock on Fox. Uh, I think this will be a good one. I think this is going to be a really good game. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll just kick us off here. All right. I think this is going to be I think this is going to be a really good game. I think this is going to be a close game. Uh I think Illinois even though there's a lot of hype in Nebraska, deserving de- deservingly so, I can talk. But I like I like I like Illinois here and what they've done so far. So I if you're saying eight and a half, eight and a half for this game here. Um actually the lines dropped down as we're recording to seven and a half, but we're picking eight and a half here. I, I like the fighting Illini in this one here. Uh, their defense has been pretty stingy here. Uh, again, they taking care of business of teams that they should take care of business, but their defense has been pretty stingy here. And I like this to be a, a closer game here. So I'll, I'll take Illinois to cover. Uh, I, I agree. Um, I had a really good first two weeks in the sloop picks sort of default following one of my rules, which was like default to the underdog. Um, week three, I kind of got a little too confident and went a little outside of the outside of the system. And then I paid for it. Still did better than Kyle. Three was terrible for all of us. Still did better than Kyle. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go back to defaulting to the underdog a little bit. We're, we're all very high on Nebraska right now. Awesome. They deserve at least some of it, but they're, this is still a team led by a true freshman and while I like Nebraska, I don't like Nebraska that much. And one of my, and aside from the tiebreaker being that Illinois, I'm getting eight and a half points on, which is a good number. I like eight and a half. You're also getting most of the bets coming in on Nebraska right now which is going to push me a little bit further to Illinois going against the crowd a bit. I'm going to go Illinois as well. Kyle, who is our guest picker and who do they pick? Yeah, we got Z spikes guest picker for this week here. Uh, So he has here at three, no Bert as the fighting Illini rolling in, including a top 25 victory over Kansas. But now they enter the meat of their schedule with their first road game of the season in Lincoln Friday night. Both teams will lean on their defense in this conference opener. So expect a low scoring game on a short week. I expect Nebraska to pull out the W, but only by one score. So I'm taking Illini with the points. There you go. And I think the short week is also 
even a bit more problematic for a freshman quarterback who might need the practice reps a little bit more and who might be missing out on some practice reps. So I, I think that's a, that's a good point that I, uh, from from Spikes. The short mm-hmm. week will, I think, affect Nebraska more than it will Illinois. Yep. All right. Game two. Game two, we have Clemson and North Carolina State. Uh, this game is being played in South Carolina, and it is a nooner alongside the Ohio State and Marshall game, which you can, again, listen to yesterday's episode if you want to hear more about that. But we're talking about Clemson and North Carolina State, where Clemson is a 16 and a half point favorite over over NC State. What do you got in this one, Jared? In this one, I'm going to go NC State. Um, I don't like Clemson enough right now to pick the minus 16 against much of anyone. It's, I mean, much of anyone in the power five, at least, right? Like if it was. I have. I, was about to, I think like every team in North Carolina is at least somewhat good, right? I couldn't think of a bad North Carolina team off the top of my head. Um, Charlotte there, I'll pick Charlotte. Um, I don't, you know, maybe if they're playing Charlotte instead of NC State, but, you know, NC State isn't the team I love this year. It's not even a team I really even like this year. But 16 points against a Clemson team that is at best mid a team that everyone should be just going, well, this is clearly the, the team to win the ACC in what is a pretty weak year for the ACC. And they're just on the pile of mid ACC teams as everyone waits to see if Miami is really all that good. Um, so, yeah, I'm not I'm not comfortable taking Clemson's minus 16 and a half against the conference foe and anyone in, in the ACC. So I'm going NC State. Give me the Wolfpack. All right. For the record, guys, I just Jared over here. Up there. Just, just up. Jared. Up. Jared. Jared right there. Picked NC State. Yeah. I'm I'm not. I'm no. I'm picking Clemson to cover. I'm picking Clemson to cover the here. NC State has has some glaring issues. Has some glaring issues in this uh this year. Uh Thought their defense would be a little bit better. But obviously, when you saw that uh, that game against Tennessee, that kind of opened some eyes there a little bit. And yeah, I I don't think this is going to be a close one. It's maybe if it was at um, in Raleigh, North Carolina, maybe it'd be closer. But nah, I'll, I'll take I'll take Clemson to to cover the sixteen in it. All right. What the spikes so have just to for say. the record, Jared, yep. Jared picked NC State and I did not for the record. So, OK, let it let it be known. OK. All right. Z spikes. We, says spikes. Here, we got we, we got into his head on that one. Yeah. Both team both teams rolled into ACC clash with a resume that includes a drubbing versus a top six team and wins over cupcakes. However, the official spread has moved up to 20 and a half. Has it really moved up? Let me. Has it really moved up that much? I did not look. I did not look at that. Holy crap! It moved up that much. Wow. Um, it's moved up to twenty and a half in this one, as NC State will be forced to start freshman quarterback C.J. Bailey due to the veteran Grayson McCall sustaining an injury last week versus L.A. Tech. Bailey did the second half comeback, but now he goes on the road for the first time. Versus a heavy blitzing defense and a difficult atmosphere. Since Vegas moved the line, I'm obviously taking Clemson to cover with the discounted spread. Sorry, Kyle, your Wolfpack aren't are going down twenty seven to six. Yeah. Uh, you should be sorry to uh, Jared, not to me. Yeah, but it's your Wolfpack. No, and it's your Gophers. No, according not, to Z Spikes, not my Gophers. <laughs> Kyle, I was, I was inviting you to get in on that joke. When I say your Wolfpack. You say not my wolf pack. You see, then then now we each have a team that's not our team. See, it's it's a it's a joke, Kyle. It's it's a yeah, you're 
trying to make it a thing and it's not a thing. But we move on. We move on to uh, game number three, which we'll cover after our first ad break here. So uh, uh, the ads are so to, fetch. Head on over to the swoopcast.com where you can check out all of our lovely links, such as uh, where to access our our YouTube page if you want to see our lovely faces, if you haven't already. Um, our Discord server. Join our D- Discord over at discord.sloopcast.com. It's our little chat environment here. We uh, have a lot of fun. We showcase a lot of games. We have uh, a lot of just, just a lot of fun in here. Uh, and if you want to participate uh, at the chat that you see down here and get lo- and to support to your, your local podcasters here, head on over to Patreon at the com. As little as $3 a month, you can become a patron of ours and help support Jared and I to continue um, to continue, continue running this podcast here. So again, head on over to the uh for more information. And with that being said, we'll go ahead and take this ad break and be right back. All right, Kyle, we are back. Um, next up, we have USC going to Ann Arbor. USC favored by five and a half. At least that's where CBS locked it in. I'm going to ask you right now, Kyle, has this line moved yet? Uh, if I didn't already say it, this game is being played in Ann Arbor. Uh, you can find it at 330 on CBS. Six. Only one point. Half a point. Half a point, a point, depending on where you're looking at. Fair enough. Yeah. So you Listen, picked the last time. I'm, I will, I'm not I will, a betting man. I will pick this. Sorry, you ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I'll, I'll pick first since you you picked first for that last one here. Uh, I think I know where you're going at here, but I don't. I don't see I don't see how Michigan can really be close in this game here. Okay, they they they, they do they are switching quarterbacks. They're going with Orgy and the uh as a court as our starting quarterback here. Will 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 he Listen. be a difference maker? No. He he won't. There's, there's I'm just there's issues on that there's issues on the offensive line for for Michigan. There's issues on the depth on the defensive side. And you know what? I think USC might have figured out their defensive issues. Ooh. Oh, uh, he said I, I know it. It's, I know it's early. He said I it. I know it's early. It's only, it's only two games for USC, but this is a totally different USC team than what we've seen Ooh. in the past few years. It's kind of, kind of, kind of like there was a, there was a certain coach that kind of held the, held the team down there a little bit. Maybe. Do, do you think... Maybe listen, listen, we don't, Maybe. he's, he's been fired. We don't, we don't, we don't gotta, we don't gotta piss That's on fine. his grave. That's fine. But I'm, I'm, I'm going on at rain here. I'm, 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 I'm picking the Trojans, picking the Trojans here to defeat uh, the team up North. So I got, I got, and to cover this five and a half, they win by more than a touchdown. I, I, I think they win by two scores easily in this game here. So more than 10 points. Give me the Trojans. Orgy's the new quarterback. I think the Trojans will keep him covered. Keep everything safe. Give me USA. See what you did there, Jared. Number's too low. The number's too low. Uh, See what you did there. What does Spikes have to say? Uh, He says here, the the jokes write themselves. Yeah, they do. As USC... Brings plenty of Trojans to the orgy <laughs> coming out of party in Ann Arbor. Uh, Teton is hoping to spark a flaccid offense, ill-equipped to rise up to the big moments. Spikes went next level with will it. sure to bring plenty of protection for Miller Moss and company as they penetrate the mm. dirty, cheating, stingy team up north defense. But with their lack of depth, the Teton defense will choke down the stretch as the runaway Trojans train pounds Teton into submission. The spread is five and a half is a joke. Not quite two and a half versus Texas funny, but still funny. Uh, those cheaters up north are 0 and 3 against the spread this season. It's a good, good stat there, which tells me Vegas models haven't quite calibrated to the reality that the Wolf Wolverines 
are back to rich rod level of suck without their secret intel. Give me USC to cover 30 to 16. After all the innuendo, you had to put rod and suck into the same sentence. Come on, Spikes. <laughs> 16 is probably too much. I'm scoring 16 points. I understand. I understand it's at Michigan, but. Does that matter? They're 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 like two more losses away from giving away tickets with a purchase of a Pepsi. Like, no, it's purchase two Pepsis for a ticket. Oh, my Get bad. It right. Get it right. Get it right. This is Gary. the second episode in a row where I said one when I should have said two. First, the red lights and now the Pepsis. Uh-huh. Yeah. Jeez. Pick the next game. It's Utah and Oklahoma State. Jeez. Utah, Oklahoma State. <laughs> Uh, Oklahoma State's favored by two and a half. Uh, this, with all respect to Kansas State, who's obviously all in this conversation and who we will be talking about, uh, in a couple games, this, this feels like a early Big 12 decider. You know, this is the type of game that we'll be potentially talking about in November as a tiebreaker, uh, when it comes time for the Big 12 championship game. Uh, it does feel right now like Oklahoma State, Utah, Kansas State. Maybe I should throw one more team in there, but for right now, those three teams feel like the front runners in the Big 12. Um, so we're getting an early preview, maybe an early deciding game in college football, or at least in the Big 12. Uh, Vegas giving Oklahoma State just the slightest of edges. And this game is, of course, being played in Stillwater, which might be the source of that. This might be a toss up if played on a neutral field. Heck, Utah might even be favored by a point on a neutral field. Um, I'm going to go Utah and straight up doing it for, for the points. I think this is a 50-50 coin flip game. Taking the underdog for the sake of taking the underdog. I think this will be a close game. This could be a game in which those two and a half points actually end up mattering. Yeah, no, it's completely understand. It's it's. I think this is a game that I have the hardest time trying to pick. I, I guess I shouldn't really be saying I, I, I'm not doing too well with the picks <laughs> this year, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's almost it's almost a pick them at, at this point here, uh, but. I'm going off of what I've seen from from who they've played, looking at how their offense and defenses have been have done so far here, and I'll I'll pick the team that's had more success um, throwing the ball. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick, I'll pick the Cowboys. I'll pick the Cowboys here. So they if they if they yeah I'll I'll pick the Cowboys to to um to cover here. So two and a half points. It's pretty much a pick him. So I'll, I'll take, I'll take Oklahoma state. Yeah. Spikes who's down in the chat says I'm right there with you. I think, I think the thing that Kyle spikes and I will all agree on is that this is the one you definitely don't actually put money on. Yeah. So Z spikes says here easily the toughest game to call this week. There you go. That's <laughs> sorry. I'm not reading these ahead of time. Z spikes. Uh, Neither as am it's, I. As it's virtually as it's virtually a pick'em game with the odds makers basically having it 50-50. However, we got some insider information as Utes wide receiver Dorian Singer leaked that Rising is going to play this week after missing last week with a hand injury suffered in the Baylor game, with Oklahoma State likely struggling to run the ball against a stingy Utah defense. In the return of Rising, give me the Utes to cover. He has 30 to 27. All right, next game, Jared, we have we have a pair of SEC matchups here. Uh, I think this is their first. Is this their first SEC true first SEC um, game here? Oklahoma. Or it Tennessee? is t- it, <laughs> Tennessee and uh, Tennessee and Oklahoma, Oklahoma getting their first sec taste here in conference uh big game big game here uh we'll, we'll find out a lot about these two teams here uh both teams undefeated coming in 
uh, coming into, uh, I'm just confirming because sometimes I never know if this is true home game. And yep, it is, it is in Norman here. Uh, even though it's in Norman, they still have Tennessee as a seven and a half point favorite in this game. Seven and a half point favorite. Uh, since you picked, since you picked, uh, first in the last one, Jared, I'll, I'll go ahead and go first. I'm I'm surprised I'm surprised it's not more. I'm surprised it's not more. I I know this I know that it seems like every year, uh, whenever Tennessee gets a lot of hype and has a lot of um expectations that they're going to do really well, they're going to win the SEC year. I mean, from what I've seen so far, they they've checked those boxes. They've dominated games they should, and there there's plenty of teams so far that have not. I mean, look, look at Oklahoma. Oklahoma beat Houston 16 to 12. They beat Tulane 34 to 19. And it wasn't that more, close. More, uh, no, uh, 15 points. You know, I'm saying if you watch that game, they didn't beat Tulsa as badly yeah. as that final mm-hmm. score. It was it was a competitive game late. Yeah. Tennessee. 69 to three over Chattanooga. Mm hmm. Completely dominated NC State, fifty-one to ten. Yep, and then shut out Kent State last weekend, seventy-one to nothing. Yeah, Tennessee has got things rolling here. Uh, unless, unless just everything just hits the fan here, and it's too much in Norman here. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it's going to be like Ohio State rolling in the Norman and taking care of business. But I think Tennessee is going to do that and more. So. Give me Tennessee to cover the spread in this game. Spikes, not happy with that answer for some reason. We'll find out after you read his answer, I suppose. If I guess. Who do you got, Jared? Um, I'm going Oklahoma. I'm going underdog. I'm going against the grain. Uh, according to CBS, two thirds of the picks are currently going to Tennessee. This feels like a trap. I'm saying it. This feels like a trap. I, I don't trust Tennessee. I trust Tennessee is about as much as I trust Miami, which is not a lot. Um, Oklahoma has not looked good so far. I I don't care. I don't care. Um, ten, we've seen ten, We've seen this game from Tennessee before where they're blowing out crap teams early in the season. And then they hit an actual football team head on and crumble. I've seen I've seen Tennessee do it too many times. Now I might change my. I actually I won't even if they even if they blow out Oklahoma I'll probably be like well Oklahoma wasn't that good anyway. If I'm being honest, that's probably what I'm gonna do. Because again, Oklahoma is not that great, and I do expect Tennessee to win this game for the record. But I trust them as a program, not not just the twenty. 20- 24 volunteers, but just as a program, I trust them so little that I'm still going to go Oklahoma here. All right. I am pulling up Z Spikes predictions here. Tennessee has been an absolute buzzsaw so far this season, including boat racing Kyle's Wolfpack with second year quarterback Nico. Kyle's Wolfpack. Um, Leading the high, high powered, uh, Jared, Jared got me distracted here. <laughs> high powered, uh, Josh, um, distracted by your wolf offense pack. and making an early case for a Heisman run. Oklahoma is three and oh, but it hasn't been easy as they eked out a, a win versus a bad Houston team and struggled to put Tulane away last week. This game is in Norman at night, the crowd will be amped. But the last time the Sooners were at home, <laughs> underdog, JT Barrett went off, leading the Buckeyes to a 21-point victory. <laughs> I expect similar to results in this one. Anything short of a double-digit spread doesn't scare me enough to shy away from Tennessee. Give me the balls to cover 33-12 to 12 on the road. Wow. All right. Next game, Kyle. All right, next game here is last game. 
is Kansas State and BYU. Like all of these, all of these final games, like uh, there's a lot of just undefeated teams, it's other only, than NC State and Clemson that we've only, talked about. It's only week all four. All of the buddy. other gate. I know, I know, but still, it's still it's three games. It's three games. All of these teams undefeated coming in coming into uh, week four here. Kansas State and BYU is a what, what kind of is it is that night game? Yeah, ten thirty. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully you got your got your caffeine going here. Ten thirty kickoff here, uh, and Kansas State in this matchup is a seven and a half point favorite. Who do you have in this one, Jared? You know, this might be another. Uh, maybe I, I don't. I don't. I don't think I know BYU is currently undefeated. I don't. I don't think it'll last. So I don't. I, they're probably not in it in the same way Kansas State's in it late in the season. Um, that being said, I'm still leaning underdog here. I'm still going against the grain here. Uh, CBS currently has 68% over two thirds of the people picking Kansas state on, on this game. So I'm going to go against the grain. I'm going to go for the underdog. I like seven and a half. If this, honest to God, if this were six and a half, I would probably switch it up. I still expect Kansas state to win, but I'm going to take the points. I'm going to take my buffer. I feel like this could be a final drive of the game to win it type football game. You know, tennis or excuse me, Kansas State wins it by, you know, four points, five points, six points, something like that. Um, And, you know, either they get a last second touchdown or maybe BYU needs a last second touchdown, something like that. But I think it comes down to that. So I'm going to take BYU not necessarily to win, probably not to win, but I am going to take the seven and a half points if they're being offered to me. Okay. Well, here, here's, here's the, here's the big difference in, in this game here. Uh, Kansas state has some, has some playmakers. Uh, I mean, every Johnson has been pretty good so far here. I've been pretty accurate. 64% completion. Uh, DJ, Go- um, DJ Giddens has been, doing pretty well 6.6 yards per carry so far this season and uh and jace brown 16.4 receptions per yard they got they got a lot of playmakers uh that they can get the ball out to byu it's if if they can just cover jake uh uh retzcliff they could just cover him prevent him from getting out and trying to make plays Kansas State can can run away with this, so it's going to really come down to can can Kansas State lock down the quarterback from being able to throw the ball, uh, which he's he's been intercept hev, interception heavy. He's thrown seven touchdowns and three interceptions, completing sixty percent of his passes. And he also leads the team in uh, rushing attempts and yards for the team. So you you hold him down, they're going to win the game here. I. I think Kansas State has that ability. I think they they will be able to do that here. I've I've liked what I've seen here, especially last week, and when they um, took care of business over Arizona, a a statement of what they what they're able to do here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the Wildcats to cover this one. All right, um, Kyle's going with the. Kansas State. Uh, what does what does Spikes have yeah. to say? He says BYU upsetting thirteenth ranked K State. Expect K State to have a letdown on the road after a statement win last week in Oklahoma State on the road on the schedule next week. So this is a trap week. He's he is saying, boy, I wonder if that's going to be respect uh, reflected. In his chaos theory picks. Um, yep. We're going to do chaos theory, but first, just a quick note. You, if you're looking at the board, you can see our Ohio State picks. If you want to hear us break down Ohio State Marshall in a bit more detail, 
listen to the Wednesday episode. Now we're going to do chaos theory, but before we do chaos theory, we're going to take a quick ad break. Um, you can find all of our links at the Most importantly, come join the discord server, which is free discord. Uh, there are, there is a premium section in the discord. Uh, and there is a, uh, version of this podcast that gets posted to our Patreon that doesn't have these ad breaks in them. You still hear me talking about the ad breaks, but the actual commercials that are about to play don't play. So here are those commercials now. All right, Kyle, we're back. Let's do chaos theory. Um, did, do we already know spikes is chaos theory? Uh, yeah, it is B it is BYU. Um, I actually well, read them. I actually, I actually read them backwards. I read what he picked for his chaos theory. Um, so I'm just going to say what oh. he mentioned for the Kansas State BYU. He said it's a Big Twelve after dark, as three and O BYU hosts three and O Kansas State in another cat on cat nighttime fight. Wildcats put it through, beating Arizona last week, ending their nation leading win streak. But this Wildcat team seems to have a case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Scary at home, but suspect on the road. Give me BYU to catch the Wildcats napping from their big win last week and catch the, them distracted with Oklahoma State looming next week. And yes, BYU outright winning 30 to 27. All right. I am going with Missouri. I like Missouri this year. Don't get me wrong. I think they're a good team. Um That being said, I'm looking for a big swing here. I'm looking for a bit of an unexpected upset. I'm looking for some big points. Uh, Missouri currently ranked as, uh, what are they, seventh, I believe. The, uh, crap, lost my spot in the notes. Yeah, currently ranked seventh. Vanderbilt's not a bad team. Not a bad team, not a good team, not a bad team, but a team that is capable in the right conditions of creating an upset. And don't get me wrong, I think this is like 15, 20% at best. But with a 19 point payout, I feel like it's worth the risk. Missouri for 19 points is my chaos theory pick for week four. All right. I I had a I had a I'll be honest, Jared, I had a tough time trying to trying to pick a team here. Cause there, there's there's definitely there's definitely some options here. Uh obviously the two that we just talked about, uh Missouri being upset, Kansas State being upset. So there's there's a there's a few there's a few games out here that you can keep your eyes out. Uh, well NC State upset Clemson. I don't think so. Well, will the Red Wolves upset the Cyclones? Maybe not as maybe not as much here. Here's the thing. I think there's some really. Like NC State beating Clemson is fairly decent chances, right? But with Clemson ranked 21st, is it worth. You know what I mean? It's I, I, I will mention I will say it's only worth though. five points. I will say this though, Jared. None of us have a single point. Yeah. And no and no ranked team has lost to an unranked team. So there's no points to win anyway. So Yeah. If anyone's point, watching this well thinking, the- wow, you guys suck. There we've had at least two no. weeks where there wasn't a possible answer. All, all the weeks, all three weeks. I thought that there was in weeks. I thought that there was no. in week two. Wasn't there an upset in week two? I thought that there was in week two, but it was like a real. Well, I guess if we if we picked week zero, that would have been like Florida State. We didn't pick week zero, though. Yeah, Florida, Florida State would have been week zero. So I thought that there was one or two in in week two, but whatever. We don't need to sidetrack the show. Um but at the very least, in week one and week three, there weren't possible answers. There, by our criteria, Georgia Tech, 
lost to Clemson. That would have technically been, and they were twenty third. Oh yeah, Georgia. T- oh yeah, Georgia Tech did lose to Syracuse. Excuse me, Syracuse. Wrong orange team. Um, yeah. So th- we haven't had. And again, in case I yeah, I didn't go over this again this episode, in case this is like your first time watching, the rules of this game is you pick an unranked team to defeat a ranked team. And the points you get are the inverse of their ranking. In other words, if you pick number one to lose, you get 25 points. If you pick number 25 to lose, you get one point and everything in between. Um, Oh, Northern Illinois. That was the one I was thinking of. Oh, shoot. I totally forgot about that. That's the one I was thinking of. I don't, I, looking at looking at all of these games, I think I'm... I think and I'm Iowa State beat Iowa. Out. See, there were a few in week two. Yeah. Not not many points. It's not many points, but I'm going to... I think this is probably the... My best, my best option here. You mentioned the team already. But I think I think Georgia I think Georgia Tech will get their second top twenty-five uh opponent taken down yeah. over Louisville, which would be six points. Uh they're ranked twentieth? They're ranked nineteenth. Okay, then that would be seven points. Okay, seven points. All right. I have a cheat sheet up in the top right here. Ah. all right that is our chaos theory uh spikes who is our guest picker uh picks kansas state to lose and he will get 13 points if that uh proves correct kyle's picking louisville to lose which is worth seven points i took a big swing i'm going with a missouri loss um i think kyle's i mean i mean it's not a I looked at Kyle's. I looked at Georgia Tech beating Louisville, and ultimately, I was I was just looking for a big. I was looking for a big swing. I think there, are, I think there are like NC State. I think I already mentioned is a decent chance. Um, I think that there are a couple decent chances. Uh, Buffalo beating uh, Northern Illinois is an outside chance. Um, I think there was one more I saw. Oh, yeah. Bowling. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, that'd be fun, though. Um, OK, maybe not. Maybe it was just those. But yeah, I think there are I think there are a, a couple good options, but they're all low value. I wanted I, I'm going big swing. If I'm going to hit on one, I want it to be at least at worth to have at least at worth two. So big swings, big swings. All right, Kyle. That's uh, that's chaos theory. That's the sloop picks. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I do, and thank you, Austin, for bringing this up here because it was just announced, just announced, um, just a few hours ago of us recording this, Jared, October fifth, against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Sounds like it's going to be a night game. Ohio State coming out with their black jerseys. Ayo. Iowa. Ayo. You can get some so revenge. It's, it's like a, you, you know, it's not going to show up. It's not going to show up in your, uh, in the feed or in the, uh, what you're sharing here. Yeah. Because it's just going to look like a complete oh, it, mess. It looks, oh, it, it kind of looks like a complete mess, even as is. <laughs> Hold on. I can, yeah. I can, I can, I can do a thing. Hold on. I can do a thing. As Jared's doing a thing there. So Ohio State um, only posted 10.5.24. And is just a very dark room. Um, and you can you can see a football player in in the in the background there. You can't quite can't quite make it out what it is there, but yep, there you go. So I think we can, are we assuming this means? I mean, it's a, it's a decent assumption. It's going to be like makes. a black. It's going to be like a blackout. I assume it's a blackout at the horseshoe. I I mean, it's a fair assumption to make. Um, 
but but it is assumption at this point, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's 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 totally blacked out. It's it's a it's a silhouette. So yeah, it, we're assuming. Now it's a, it's a it's an easy assumption to make, but we are assuming. There's no official press release on this. I assume. I said assume a lot just then. That is the only thing is that the official Ohio State uh, football. Uh, Hold on. X page. Oh, no, that. don't, don't you. Not, not okay. Hold on. You want, you want to try You want to try a thing? Let's try a thing real quick. Then, then we'll end the show. We're going to try and do a thing. Nope. That didn't help at all. Never mind. Listen, I tried turning. The, I tried turning the. Try not to do things live. Well, no, it's fine. I tried. To, I tried cranking the exposure on it, but no, it's it's a silhouette. Okay. They they have a good graphics department. They wouldn't they wouldn't let me get away with that at Ohio State. There there there. I have done that in the past, where I've gone in there and like screwed with the raw, uh, the cam which in Adobe, what you call the camera raw settings, and yeah, found shit that I wasn't supposed to find. Uh, no, but the, the graphics team at, at, at Ohio State are too smart for that. Good job, graphics team at Ohio State. All right. Um, and that was that was Kyle's Corner. That's it. I, I think that's a big announcement. We do like our black jerseys here. Kyle, episode zero of this podcast, we talked about black jerseys. And here we are. Nine years later. Next, next year's the tenth tenth anniversary of the sloop. Ca- well, the sloop te- cast. Technically, cast. this is that. Technically, this is year ten of the sloop cast. No, this is year nine of the sloop cast. No, first year was twenty fifteen. Mm-hmm. Therefore, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is our tenth year. We've been doing it for nine years, but this is the tenth season because you have the first year, which hasn't been one year, is season one. If it's been one year, we starting season two. Listen. Don't do don't do math live exactly. Oh, how spikes. do you know he's talking not, not to me? Strong, not a strong point. Not a strong suit for Jared. <laughs> I think Kyle is right. Listen to me that if. I don't remember the exact date, but I think it was like August. Let's say it was August 20th. That's close. I don't know if that's exact, but let's 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 say August 20th, 2015 was the first episode of the Sloopcast. It was it was in August. Don't don't quote me on the exact date. August 20th, 2015. We will hit our 10 year anniversary in August of 2025. And I don't care what math you do. That is the correct way to. That is the correct way to count these things. You you can take your math tricks. But you're saying that this is the this is the 10th season, though. It is not. It. I want to spell it out for you, Jared. You know what? There. There you go. I don't care. Jared being stubborn as always. Just go ahead and end the episode, Jared. Tenth birthday is what's important to me. We that's we are only in nine. <laughs> I'm right. I don't care what you say. I'm right. Tonight's ending music. Let us know in the YouTube comments who's right about this stupid argument. Um, <laughs> no, my math is good. The way you're counting is bad. See, Z Spikes says I'm I right. don't care. I, I, I love you, Z Spikes. Don't, don't you worry. I don't care about the math. I'm doing this like a like an anniversary or a birthday. But you don't do that for seasons. You don't do that for seasons. I don't care about the seasons. 
care about the birthday. You started, you start, you started off with that. Shut up. Maybe shut up. Maybe I want to do a big 10th anniversary thing. And maybe you're ruining that for me right now. Because I thought it was next year. I think I may be wrong, but I think I did say that we, we, it was like an episode in August of this year, 2024. I said that this was the tenth season of the Swoopcast. You're like, yeah, woo, yeah. So I believe you did acknowledge it at one point, but I digress, and I will let we you. We will do ten year. We will celebrate ten years of the Sloopcast next year. That is correct. That See, this, is, this correct. is a stupid semantic argument. It doesn't matter. You were correct there, but this is season Kyle? ten. Kyle, of I swear to God, let me end the episode now. anniversary Bert, whatever it doesn't matter besides i need to celebrate the 10th year and i will spend like two months doing the art for that so fuck off tonight's ending music is brought to you by columbus bass band called slim fit i'm so distracted right now i want to drive to north carolina and punch kyle so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is uh, Slim Fit. Slim Fit.